because if we are I think TFI is really nice. It's so flexible. Yeah. But we, we definitely wanted to to counter the min rush, and I think we would have if we didn't boundary our TFI. <laughs> Why? While I have the both of you here, we're gonna go to the draft, and I want to ask you guys questions on different captains. So let's let's go over there and look at that really quick. Sure. All right. Oh, did we just get another raid? Actually, ISD. Black, thank you. 13. Fuck yeah. Can I say that out loud? Hell yes. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyway, uh, so we got the, the draft going here of goblins versus scared one more people. Uh, round two. Um, let's assign Vordak to the goblins team and Will to the scared wormhole people team. Uh, Vordak, talk to me a little bit about your draft here. So I'd be pretty happy so far with this draft. I mean, I'm I don't know how good the Sle the Slepner Vagabond style like Minrushy stuff is in the meta, but it can work especially um, because it's low lower execution in my opinion. Obviously, there's a high skill ceiling to making it work, but you know any team could probably make a, a rush comp work. So so far, it, I would favor red team in this draft. That's and interesting. Will, tell me about your side. What, do you, what are you feeling confident right now? What do you think? Well, I'm definitely happy that I have the Serb to take care of the Hyena. Sorry, to take care of the Worm. The Hyena, I'm a little bit confused about. Um, I, I would assume that they're going to go for some kind of kiting setup Whoa. here with the Hyena. Whoa. Whoa. That's an Executor. That is an Executor. Uh, remind me, what does an Executor do? That gives armor reps. And what kind of uh, fit is a Serb normally? Well, normally it's shield. All but right, so uh, how are you feeling about your team now, Vordek? Armor control serve. Interesting. Yeah, so I, I guess what Blue is thinking here is that they're going to try to use all the mid slots on the serve for Eeyore. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I, it's tough to make an armor serve work. This thing this is, blue if you... side draft, I'm, I'm not feeling this blue side draft. Yeah. So the, the the issue is like if you want to go like I thought about this a bit if just stacking full ECM for example on armor Kaldari ships to get as many mid slots as possible, but a lot of the times the problem is that well for one you can't really rely on ECM 100% of the time and also now that the jam ship can shoot what's jamming it it doesn't actually help you that much. Yeah. And, and blue side still needs links here if they're going to go for some like heavy control comp with an armor serb, control mids, a hyena, and Magus and Pontifex have just been banned out. And they take a TFI, so they're not going to have links. Interesting. Yeah, I, I have to say I'm a bit confused by the blue draft. Hurricane Fleet, though, and Stabber. Wow, so they've committed to the Minrush meme. Do you like? I I would really like to see some kind of control setup come into the meta at some point because I think they're really fun, fun setups to have. I think in... control setups are super viable right now. That's interesting. What what kind of control are you thinking of? Uh, armor control with like, I mean, obviously it depends on the draft and what you're facing, but I feel like you can you can go for some kind of armor comp with a bunch of utility mids. Get some mm -hmm. get a Pontifex in there or something. Get some info links and oh, definitely, you definitely have a, you have a decent chance, especially with Logi. But definitely, I guess what I meant was that in the AT we see teams with like double recon, double E warfare, right. that kind of thing. Yeah, and obviously recons aren't allowed here. So why do you think controls are viable right now, Vordek? Is it just because it's only five people to control and not as much GPS to say an eight or ten or twelve? Yeah, that's pretty much it. If you can take like a single key shift out of the fight or two then you would have just have such an advantage even if you're sacrificing a bunch of your utility mids to uh to do that now talk to me about the ecm changes that happen ecm is more of a taunt now right so you can only jam or lock what is jamming you how has that changed the tournament meta uh in regards to gems i think we're seeing a lot of just like when someone might have fit like an extra web or a target painter or a tracking disruptor they're just fitting a certain uh, color jam to try and like s snipe out someone from being able to lock whatever they want to prime. So I think that's been happening a lot where you just see a couple of like random unbonus jams and comps. Um, and it's been 
fairly effective, but it's also, you can also sort of kind of expect it at this point. And so if you have an info link or you just fit some SIBOs or have a remote SIBO somewhere near comp, you can usually deal with it okay. Yeah, I think that's why teams are prioritizing the Pontifex over the Magus usually. Yeah. And yeah, I have to say, I thought I thought ECM would be stronger than it is at, when I first saw the this format. Yeah, I was worried that because ECM, because you can't script most EWAR, but in a, in a sense, you can script ECM because you get to choose the color because you see what, uh, what yeah, chips the it would be a lot stronger. Yeah, I would think it would be extremely strong, but it's been, uh, it's been actually okay so far. Although we were jammed quite a bit in our match, so. <laughs> yeah, we did in the, in the first draft that you and I played, we had a green jam on, or yellow jam on the VNI and the Stork, so. Yeah, our Deacon was jammed out the whole match, and I think some of our DPS was jammed out as well. I do like how you can just hide like little cheese things here and there, and it completely just you know changes the outcome of a match. That's that's very very cool. Yeah, it, it's definitely not the best feeling feeling like you just got jammed and you've lost the match because it's because of it. But at least you can lock what's jamming you and hopefully kill that. Doesn't help if you're in a deacon. Yeah, that's why that's why Logi has not been super good in this format. I think I think people are even overvaluing Logi. I'm seeing too much Logi. Do you think that the points need to be changed, or just in a five-man setup, one ship for only reps is too much? Yeah, I, I think that's the problem. I think I think some of the the tendency that we've seen towards like hybrid Logi ships, where there's still a ship that does damage, like the RR Marauders type of stuff, or battleships, are much more viable than just taking a Deacon or an Executor and just sacrificing that entire slot to to Logi, because I feel like you can just outplay it. Fair. Um, so on Goblin side, Goblin side. Wow, I'm gonna so ruin this. Anyway, we see a kind of a pseudo Mimitar rush. Um, Mimitar rush has always kind of been a stable in AT, but uh, medium ACs got buffed. Uh, did they not? How has that changed? Has it actually made this that much stronger, or is it the same as it always been? Well, I think it's nice because you have the selectable damage types, and I think that's also something that people need to be thinking about in this format is what damage types they're bringing. Because especially against an armor comp, you can just fit a reactive, and if you're pure EM therm, you know, shooting lasers, then you're in trouble. But ACs can can do any kind of damage type, and they just do more damage now. And uh, like hail is pretty nasty now, so I'm kind of expecting them to just rush down this exec. I don't think they can screen it well enough. Well, with a hyena crew, maybe they have a chance. Keep things Do you think they even have to kill the exact? What about just jumping on the TFI? Well, I think the TFI, if the TFI is moving in to get, uh, to try and commit on something, then I think that's a mistake. I think he needs to be playing safe, um, and trying to avoid being caught. I think this hyena and crew are gonna have to do a whole lot of work. I don't know if they're gonna be able to do it because ACs are pretty decent at fragging frigates. Yeah, I mean, even if they're using two webs each and they split. Up, all four of their webs between between the red team. I think uh, it's a, it's only a matter of time before they get on it top of something. It would be some pretty god tier piloting yeah. from that hyena and crewer because figure two webs each. If you want to try to screen the slip and Vega with one, and Hurricane Fleet Stab with the other, that's a freaking lot of work for a little forget to do. Even with reps behind it, that's that's beyond my skill level. Maybe, maybe somebody as good as Vordak or Will here, but yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> I can't do that. Pilot. <laughs> I'm not either. I, I fly the big slow stuff generally. That doesn't take a lot of brain power. Yo, I, speaking of big slow stuff, I flew a nightmare last night, and that was kind of fun. But you battleship pilots have it easy. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, flying battleships is. Well, I mean, it's a different skill, but it's definitely less uh, fast reaction compared to flying. I think. I think flying these uh, our, our battleship cores in the five v five is actually quite tough. That is true. You just have so many modules to manage. I don't know how many hotkeys you guys assign, but I don't have enough hotkeys to fly like an R Cronus. I have to click buttons <laughs> at that point. <laughs> well, Vordak, thank you for uh, stopping by and, and kind of giving us your perspective of that. Uh, look forward to giving you guys shit Cheers, and guys. Uh, seeing you in the future. See you, Vordak. All right, see you guys. So, Wingnut, I want to bring you in here. Uh, you've been very patient in the background. Uh, what do you think from this Goblins draft of uh, a pseudo Mimitar Rush? I absolutely love it, mate. Like, some of my favorite ships are in that lineup. And as you said, selectable damage type. They're all fast hulls as well. They're just going to rush down, kill that exec, because you, you just can't screen it. They can try, but, I mean, they're going to have to try really damn hard. 
I, I'm loving it. It's I, I'm I'm all for red right now. All right, and uh, Mizier, again, thank you for being patiently quiet and waiting. Uh, what do you think, uh, Scared Worm? Will be? Do you got a chance? I mean, can these frigates actually hold this guy's back? It's going to be really hard for them. They have picked a setup where they need to have a flawless execution, and uh, I, I they, they might be a good team, but I'm not sure if they're good enough to actually pull this off. Uh, and even if they web uh, the the Minmata ships, then. Uh, all four of them have a projection bonus, so they can just shoot back at the, the hyena, they can shoot back at the crew. So this is going to be extremely hard for Scarlet the uh, Wimhole team to uh, to pull off, so... I, I, I'm not putting my money on them. Now just to play devil's advocate, you could always do a boom headshot kind of meme from the goblin side. Uh, higher skill cap, probably a lot harder to pull off with not too much reward. I mean, do you see them going full arty, or is just Mimitar Rush too easy? I think it's going to be Mimitar Rush, uh, especially with the Vagabond instead of the Munin. Uh, the Vagabond is generally better with ACs, while the Munin is better with artillery. Don't let yeah. uh, AP hear you say that. And there's a few mad lads that will fly artillery stabbers beside me, so I don't see that working. I mean, can you even fit artillery and tank on a stabber? No, you can fit one or the other. Take your pick. It, huh. You can't get tank. I've so tried. It seems like Red have, have it all pretty easy, and it's kind of theirs to lose. Uh, what can we think about for Scared Wombo people to give them a, a greater advantage here? Obviously, you can't go Torps on the Typhoon fleet. You kind of have to go Rapid Heavies. I mean, what, what, what play options do you guys see? Honestly, their game is playing Delete DPS. they got to get rid of the Stab of the Hurricane fleet. The worm, if they can get rid of it, but that's going to be, you know, if the Serp can pull that off. Is this going to be a game of game of delete the DPS before your exec dies? Uh, what what do you shoot here first? Do you think you uh, everything's so hard to kill? Is it actually the Hurricane Fleet that's your best primary, or what? What do you uh, shoot? Hurry Fleet or the Stabber? That's your two picks. Everything else is just not going to work. I think I if I'm blue here, I'm using the hyena get to get two webs on the slap. The crew to get two webs on the HFI, try to split them up, put the Serb on the Worm, and get the TFI to kill the, uh, the Stabber and the Vaga as they come in and split from their team, but that's very tough to pull off. Yeah, that requires a lot big, of good things. The big issue with the blue team is that they only have the Typhoon, typhoon Fleet issue to do real DPS. The Zippers is a, it's a nice ship, but when you armor a tank, it, uh, you don't have the dose loss for damage much. Yeah, that's kind of the problem I'm seeing with like trying to protect your Lodgy requires so many ships that you don't have the DPS to really make the best use of the Lodgy in the first place. Huh. Now, Rain, you're quiet also. I know you love your Lodgy. You think this exec here had, has a chance to win it for his team, or what, what, do, you, what do you see is happening here? Um, I mean, win it for the team might be kind of pushing it, but I think <laughs> if he is not primaried, it's going to make it very difficult to kill some of the stuff on his own team. I could easily see the Serb being full shield tank, and then he just kites around the arena and completely ignores the rest of his team. Like, I, if the Serb, my prediction is, if the Serb doesn't go for that worm, I don't think the Serb's doing what he should be doing, assuming he's rapid lights. But the moment the Serb deletes the worm, worm can't go for the hyena or the crew, and so then, then the Serb can just start applying damage and assisting the Typhoon fleet issue, but his goal should be kiting, not sticking near his own team. Because I'm assuming... This is assuming the Typhoon fleet issue gets rushed, or the Executor gets rushed. You don't want the Serb to be just sitting there waiting to be the next target. I yeah. do think it's important that they fit some kind of sensor strength uh, boosting modules on red, because I I'd be a bit worried about the Serb just sitting at range and jamming everyone. Yeah, and they could easily do that. Like They can they can give up those mids if they're a full rush. Just just put a sexy bow on and have some fun. Yep. I know this is. I don't remember the last time I saw an armor armor Serb. So there's definitely some mid slots there to play around with. I'm a little bit worried by going armor, right? You're gonna lose some either application or DPS because you have to fit armor tank, which are mostly low slots. Um, how bad does that hurt if you're trying to clear that worm? Can you still do it in kind of a, a normal amount of time, or are you kind of hurting for damage? Uh, right. If, if you're rapid one. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I mean, you can go on, but yeah, it's like. Like, right, yeah, Rapid Light applies better to smaller things, but that still doesn't mean he completely applies garbage tier to the, some of these cruisers and whatnot. Like, if you were to take a Serb versus a Stabber, I would hope the Serb would win, but I don't know. I mean, he has an ADC. He could probably throw, a, like, a terrible self-rep on there or something along those lines if they want to shit-fit it. 
Nothing as well as he will not be outrunning these uh, Mimitar holes in an armor serve. That this is just no. Yeah. So the serve does about 300 DPS with rapid lights and no no damage mods, which might give the worm time to get out of to uh to survive the first the first clip, which would be yeah. really bad. What is the range of those uh, serve rapid lights? 94k. And the lock range of a serp is probably greater than that, so it's going to be missile range, not lock range. Correct? Yeah, I, I mean, you're probably not going to be able to get out of range, but it might just... I'm not sure of the numbers off the top of my head, but you might just not have enough damage in the clip. Huh. Well, we're talking like they don't have much of a chance, but man, I, I really hope that Carl figures something out here. Um, is a battle exec possible? Can you do some some tackle and just... I don't even know. I'm trying to think of out of the box ideas for them. I, have I think seen the answer to that one is just a no. I have seen on TQ a battle exec. And oh, yeah, I saw it all the time. It's great. It is, but that's TQ fitting rules, which I think wouldn't apply here. So I would say for this tournament, no. Yeah, the main deal for that idea is because the whole idea of a battle exec is to tank and to sig tank and have like so many cap boosts you outlast them. You can't do that here. It can't sig tank auto cannons. It can't uh, out tank the DPS is coming at it. It just doesn't work. So the issue here is that the Lucky ships they have a, a high point cost. So even if you do a bad leg secure, it's going to be extremely cost ineffective. Yeah, that's actually a good, really, really, really good point. How much is a, a Tech One Lucky Cruiser? Twenty three points. So that could have been a, another hack or something. Yes, yeah, so that's that's a fair point. Oh, welcome, Hoodie. How you doing? Hey, what's up? Uh, we're going all right. We've uh, if you have time, I'm going to throw you right into this and ask your opinion on this draft. I don't have it open yet, but uh, let me. Uh, there you are. One sec. Let you form some opinions. We've uh, seen over and over again here in the booth that when we all pick one side and just think there's no way possible, we're usually always wrong. So I'm just trying to big brain myself and figure out how we're going to be wrong. But from our perspective, this uh, Mimitar Rush team has it kind of in the bag. And I'm, I'm interested to see if you have any outside-the-box perspectives on how they can throw this. Um, well, for starters, they could boundary. Oh, okay, fair. <laughs> <laughs> Shutting up. That happens occasionally, I heard. Um, I, I would agree with you. I, I think they're in a good position. It's um, it's an awkward. I, do I see a Cerberus and an Executor in the same setup? Yeah, we all did. You do kind of picked our mouse up on the floor when that happened. Okay. Well, you know, th there might be uh, mid slots available, for example, in this particular setup. So there's always ways you can lose this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'll Indeed. Sure. I was saying it's very important for Red to fit some Cebos. I mean, what's going to happen there? Like, if the Serb has ECM to try and uh, to jam these uh, cruisers and hacks, they're just going to go kill the Serb. It, it can't outrun them. Well, let, let's make it official and let's go down the list with some predictions and see if we can just put our foots in our own mouth and, and be wrong. Uh, Hoodie, quick prediction uh, on your side. What, who are you going with? No, I, th I think I have to agree with Mimitar Rush. It seems, uh, seems solid. I think they're going to win. I, yeah. Um, Rain, what do you what are your thoughts? I'm gonna go with the scared wormhole people. With I have no idea what you want to call this comp, mostly because if they win, then I look really smart, and if they lose, it's like ah, I was cheering for the underdog. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> all right. Way to head your bets there. Fine, win win. Will, uh, what do you think? Yeah, I'll go with red. I think it's fairly easy to execute this. Uh, Mid year. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, red as well. It's uh, just uh, approach F1 is something test can do. Ooh, shade. <laughs> that was okay. Well done. Best shade of the day. Uh, wing that. What, what do you think? Trust in the rust, baby. They got this. Oof. I'm just, I'm still sitting here trying to think of a way for scared one more people to do this. Um, we'll we'll go find out when we're wrong. Yeah, actually, truth. Uh, the teams are just undocking. It looks like their time's up. So we're about ready to go. But well, before I toss it over there, um, Hoodie, if you're the captain of. You know the Memento Rush team. You have this in the bag. What are you primary? Is it just literally the first thing you catch, or are you trying to get you know pretty much the two DPS cores off here? I think you want to try and get the core off. Like if you're capable of breaking through the TFI, that's like the main thing that's going to kill you, right? Like the rest, you you can tank for a long enough time. So I think that has to be your primary target. 
Interesting. Um, fudge. Will any any other thoughts here? Or, I mean, I'm still well, trying yeah, to I mean, be it depends on positioning. Time. Depends on positioning a bit. If the exec is easy to catch, I think that's uh, a fine first target as well. But you don't want to spend too much time burning around to try to get on top of the exec if you can just kill the TFI. Yeah. And then playing devil's advocate, Rain, what are you primarying over here on your, your beloved executor team? Ooh. I would say Serb goes for the worm, and then everyone else goes for the closest rushing ship. So whichever of the three I mean, cruisers. They're all going to be on you, like, really, really fast. You, If you have to pick one, which one are you going for? One. Whatever one's closest. So whichever one takes off first or is the closest. I mean, the good call would be Slepner's tankier, but it also has the links, and getting the links off the field is always good. Yeah. Um, Hoodie, question for you. If something's going to die within a link cycle anyway, do you still primary it because getting links off the field is is done? Is not good? Wow, words. Or is it, let's just not worry about it because this link cycle is not going to go off a second time anyway? Oh, I don't think it 100% applies in this particular match. I mean, the, the links here are coming from from ships that also happen to be doing a lot of damage, so you're doing both at the same time. But if you're talking specifically about command destroyers, it just depends on whether you think you're going to go for a very long game or not. Like, if you're going to be killing something in, you know, 20 seconds after you've dropped the links, like, why did you drop the links first? And you could have just taken 25 seconds to drop the target and still fine. But mm -hmm. in matches where you know that you're not going to be able to grind through something, yeah, killing a links first is definitely beneficial. Fair. Now, I did just look over at Twitch chat. Um, is a ham serve viable here? Uh, yeah, I don't see just... why not. Why didn't we think of that? We had 15 minutes to talk about bullshit, and we never said that, so way to go, us. We were too caught up with just the fact that there's a Serb, so I think it's okay that we oversaw that potential aspect. All right, well, the teams are on the field here. Um, I'm going to send it over to Wingnut and Rain Chocolate to hope that the uh, the Logi team here can pull this out and make us all look stupid. You guys go for it. All right, welcome back. I'm Rain. I'm joined by Wignet. We're going to be commentating scared, scared wormhole people versus goblins. So as predicted, the uh, oh, what you call Mimitar rush team is all auto cannons. They have warped at zero with Vili and the worm at thirty. And a true test pilot, Vili, of course, starting at thirty. <laughs> Meanwhile, of course, everyone on the other side have all sat at fifty kilometers, trying to stay as far away from this big ball of water cannons. Yeah, so we do have the readies and local, and the countdown will be coming soon. Uh, do you think? Do you think there's anything this uh, scared wormhole people can do to try and beat this? Uh, I mean, rush? we've bashed them enough at this point. We don't think they're going to win this. So if I say any more, I'm going to look like an absolute idiot. But <laughs> okay. yeah, they got, they, they, they've got no chance. Countdown's going, and that's the ghost ghost on there. All right. So as we and... see the match start, we will actually get to see if you are right. Yep. And you can, you can hear screaming from all of those uh, Mimitar ships, just Leroy, let's go. Looks like, looks they like they're are. going for the TFI, I think. Yep, uh, I see Worm and TFI, so I'm guessing that he, that Serb is actually probably shooting that Worm, like I uh, would hope he would. But I also don't know if he's hams or not, so I can't actually accurately make that prediction. Yep. I'm seeing tackle effects pretty much in every single Mimitar ship on the way in, but they are still burning in. The crew just went pop, so that's one of those tackle ships gone. Yep, her, or Hyena gone as well. Looks like he was probably yeah. attempting to screen with those webs. Yeah, for a moment they didn't actually have them screened down, but unfortunately they have to be within the range of what these ships can shoot. So the moment they did that, they just died. And they're going straight for the executor by the looks of it. No, never mind, sorry. TFI. Yep, so Hurricane getting shot, exec also getting shot pretty heavily. He's, it looks like he's caught. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, maybe not, no, not caught. They're just able to apply to him from a long ways away. No way he can live to win for this as he goes blap. I'm watching this Vagabond just kind of chilling next to the TFI right now. Is that the place to be? That Hurricane is living. Um, it looks like he has his own self rep. Those are not rep drones on him. Yeah, and so they're attempting to clear the drones. Um, he's living to win, dying by this Typhoon. Typhoon is yeah, also I mean, Hurricane Fleet's the right call for sure. Like, it's, it's the, probably the weakest thing on Grid except for the Stabber, and the Stabber's a bit harder to hit, so Hurricane Fleet is the right call, but unfortunately, he's just he's going to go down way too late if he goes down at all. Although, they are all at 100 kilometers, so Hoodie's prediction of the entire red team boundary could still come true. Typhoon could have given it a try, but unfortunately, he's so hard tackled, he could barely move. 
Yeah, and I will say, Billy and the Worm still alive. I don't know what. Oh, Serb is actually still also attacking the hurricane. They just kind of ignored this worm then. Yeah, well, the hurricane will go down, so they will at least you know, get some blood back from themselves. But unfortunately, that TFI just can't hold. Maybe with, with Hurricane Fleet down, he will have a bit better chance of repping, but you're looking at somewhere around 2,000, 2,500 DPS. Yeah, this Typhoon also seems to be, what is he, doing uh, newting? He's attempting to newt the Slepner, attempting to rep back some armor if he can, but it's not doing him too well as he's bleeding whole. Yes, yeah, unfortunate. So Typhoon versus Slepner and the Vega and the Stabber and the Worm. Well, the worm is now attempting, or actually finally dying. A bit, bit of honor there. Remove the worm quickly. <laughs> get, get a victory. I mean, to be fair, like, a wor like killing the worm's not bad, but it's just not something you want to do when your main battleship is dying to the entire enemy fleet. Exactly, yeah. Like, that tier 5, I would have been going for the stabber. I mean, you're going to have trouble hitting it, but it's way better than trying to rip through a Slepnir who's got the tank of the gods on his side. Yeah. Although, to be fair, so this Cerberus going after the worm means he is... Further, I want to say, further away from um, where the Typhoon was, but he is not living to win. He is definitely cannot outrun the Mimitar Rush. Team. Oh, yeah. You, you can see the rush coming. Like You can just see the Vagabond <laughs> yeah. the Stabber just running at a high speed. He did actually manage to kill the Worm, though, so props to him. And now he... Go right, go right to the border, man. Bend right to the border. You got this. All he's got to do is dip and dive. Now go straight at the border. Come on. Let, let's, let's make him boundary. We got a chance here. He's attempting make, make it. He's going to give it a try. He's, he's not not close enough, unfortunately. Keep yeah. that prop. Come on, man. We can make the team boundary. I believe in you. He is actually... Did he just... shield? Yeah, he is shield shield tank, so... Not an armored tank, sir. So he does have a bit more damage. But I don't think he's going to be able to kill this stabber with the bag on uh, him as well. I don't think so. I think I, don't, I think the stabber takes a lot of SP, maybe? I could be imagining things. Uh, yeah, that looks right. He's... um uh, Or more than halfway through his cycle, or his uh, load, though. Clip? Load? Whatever an ASB does. <laughs> Charges, <laughs> no, I, I guess. Know. Charges? Yeah, Charges? That works. Yeah. Oh, God. It looks like he's living to win, though. Although he, he still has the ADC as well, so when he needs to use that, he'll still have a bit longer. So he actually might get the stuff. <laughs> it is a possibility. Yeah. He may have already ADC'd. We saw him tanking there for a decent amount of time, so either they just stopped shooting him for some reason, or he ADC'd. What I do like about the Serb is, you know, as a, even as a kiting ship, you've got really good tank, at least for about a minute, then it runs out. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still hoping. He's at, he's also at 100 kilometers. He could get these two to boundary. He is slowly burning out. It is a possibility. Oh, nope, no. Never mind. Our hopes and dreams crushed. 